Hello YouTube, how's it going? It's Professional here. So a few days ago, I uploaded a video hitting $200 million legitimately on GTA. I have had a lot of people ask me, what is my secret? How do I get money so quickly? I have also had a lot of newer people come to my channel and ask me this as well. I have made so many different money guides in the past. I will also link the playlist to my money guides in the description down below in case you guys want to check that out. I have made various solo money making guides to a bunker money guide to an MC money guide to a CEO broke and beginner's money guide. I guarantee you if you take a look at this playlist there's at least one method there that fits your play style. Now in this video we will be focusing on my personal method, the method that I use all the time. And as you guys see from the title, if you follow this guide you will get around four million dollars a day. I always do. Now I also have two different methods in this video in case you guys do not like one. I'm also gonna say straight up as part of this part of this guide is solo friendly but another part is not. The majority of this guide you need a minimum of one to two people, so the majority of it you can do by yourself or with an extra friend. But at the very end of this guide, it's recommended that you at least get two other friends. So three people together, counting you. So two more people at the end, but I'm going to explain that a little later. And you're going to need to own... You're going to need to own some MC businesses and a bunker minimum for this guide. So you're going to need to own those properties. So if you don't own those properties, this guide is not for you, but it will get you around $4 million. I'll explain that later. So this guide is going assuming that you will be playing for around five to six hours. So let's say you have the day off, you're not doing anything, and you have around five to six hours to play. If you, are, if you have around five to six hours to play, you will hit that $4 million mark in that time frame. So in this week, you can make around $7 million a day instead of four million dollars a day because it's double money on the businesses. But enough of me talking, I'm sure you guys just want me to start explaining how to get four million dollars a day. So here we go, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do for this money guide is you're gonna wanna buy supplies for five of your MC businesses or four. You don't really need the document forgery if you want that one, it's a little bonus, but it's good to have weed counterfeit cash meth and coke and make sure those businesses are fully upgraded if you own these businesses it's gonna be a lot of help for this for this guy this is where the majority of your money is gonna come in at the end but when you first sign into gta online when you go online just buy full supplies for your businesses that's what i always do and also make sure you buy supplies for your bunker make sure that your bunker is also upgraded so as you can see we bought supplies there for weed document forgery coke now we're gonna be going on to um, counterfeit cash counterfeit cash is purchased and we're purchasing it for meth now. Now I know I'm going to be asked by a lot of people, why are you buying supplies versus stealing supplies? The reason that we're buying supplies for all of our businesses, including the bunker, is because these businesses are passive businesses. They will produce as long as they have supplies without you having to do anything. So all you need to do is just fill them up with supplies and they'll be producing. And in the meantime, you can do other things. That's where the other part of the guide comes in. So after 10 minutes, all of your supplies should be delivered. It takes around 10 minutes for each batch of supplies to be delivered. And what you can do also is you can also go on the cameras. You can go on the cameras in your business or in your bunker or you can even watch TV and when you do that you will not be kicked so alternatively if you guys gotta go somewhere if you gotta do homework or if you gotta go to sleep you can just leave your PlayStation on and as long as your supplies were delivered you can just go on these cameras or you can go in the TV in your apartment and you won't be kicked and you can just sit on here leave your PlayStation on and your supplies will pretty much be producing that entire day and then when you come back your supplies will either be 50% produced or they'll be 100% produced depending on how much supplies you left off with so you, this is a really good way for you to produce your businesses even when you're not there so when you got to go to sleep this is a good thing to do because then you wake up the next day and your businesses will be ready and you can just start selling them or you just resupply them again and pretty much you'll be there Okay, so now let's move on to the next part of the guide. What are you going to be doing in between? So let's say that you have time. Let's say that you don't want to go AFK. Let's say that you want to do something in between. What can you do in between if your businesses are producing? Now, the first part of this guide, this is the import-export guide that I've done, the solo import-export guide. You guys know it's basically where I just sell a car every 48 minutes, and then I and then I do headhunter, sightseer, back-to-back, and then steal an import-export car and sell it. If you guys if you guys have already seen that part, you can just skip ahead to the next part. I'm going to leave in the comments down below the top pinned comment. I'm going to leave the exact minute you can skip to. So let's start off with me method number one. Okay, so like my import-export method that we've done in the past, you're gonna want to go up to this part of the city, the Los Santos Customs up here. This is where the nicer cars tend to spawn. Take this car, if you ever see this car, the Ubermarked Oracle, or another car similar in value. This is the car that I almost always see up here. It's worth $8,000. Sell that. Make sure that you're using a stopwatch because you can sell a car every 48 minutes, and that's an easy $8,000 you can get every 48 minutes. Then, after that, make sure that you're in a CEO, and if you have a buzzer, this is gonna help you out a lot. Start up Headhunter. Do a Headhunter, knock that out. 
So take a look at that. We're already up to $29,000. So after that headhunter, what you're going to want to do is go right back to your office. There's going to be a 10 minute cooldown on headhunter and you have to wait five minutes for the next VIP work anyways. So once you're in your office, source a, ve a vehicle. And here's another tip. You're able to source only top range cars as long as you have around 10 mid range and 10 standard range cars. So after the vehicle is delivered to the warehouse, what you're going to want to do is leave the warehouse immediately. Don't sell the vehicle, just leave the warehouse. And take a look at that guys, you see the headhunter, it's on a 2 minute and 40 second cooldown. But look at this, Sightseer is ready. So now once we complete Sightseer, that headhunter cooldown is still going down. So we're going to complete Sightseer right here, got $22,000. We're going to want to fly back to the city because headhunter is a lot easier to do in the city. So Right after you complete that Sightseer, Headhunter will be ready instantly. You can see all the other VIP works are on a cooldown, but Headhunter is ready instantly. So let's do Headhunter and Sightseer back to back with the import export, and you can beat the cooldown. So we beat the cooldown there. We did both Headhunter and Sightseer. After you complete that Headhunter, go right back to your vehicle warehouse and sell that top range car. Sell that top range car. We got around, it says we got around $100,000, but in reality, we got around $80,000 because we had to invest $20,000 in the customize just as long as we take no damage along the way. So after that car, just do another Sightseer. Sightseer should be ready, should be ready, cooldown should be done on that. After the Sightseer is, is finished, go back and do Headhunter. Take a look at this here. Look at them, they're all on a cooldown, but Headhunter is ready. So if you do Sightseer and Headhunter back to back, you can beat the cooldown. Just make sure that you complete the, them as quickly as you can, because if that cooldown passes it, you'll be stuck on five minutes again. And just keep doing this order. Sell a car every 48 minutes, then do a Headhunter. After the Headhunter, go steal an import-export vehicle, deliver it, get out of the import-export warehouse, do a Sightseer, and then after, after that Sightseer, Headhunter should be ready. Do that Headhunter, then go back to the warehouse, and then sell your vehicle, and then do a sightseer again. And then after that sightseer, go and steal a car, bring it back to the warehouse, and you just keep repeating these steps, and you can make a lot of money here. In some cases, if you don't manage to beat the cooldown, you'll have both headhunter and sightseer at the same time. If that happens, then just go and steal another import-export vehicle. There's also a 20-minute cooldown after you sell an import-export vehicle, so you can basically get a minimum of at least two import-export vehicles in that hour and sell them. And right here, after 48 minutes pass, we just sell another car, and we just keep doing the steps over and over again. That car has been sold. Deliver, delivered another import-export vehicle here. Got $80,000. Then after we sold the car, we get another, we do another sightseer here. Pick up the package, $22,000. We're at $165,000. Then do another headhunter here. And remember, we also have $160,000 in the bank. We made basically around $340,000 an hour in an hour here. But you can make between $300,000 to $400,000 an hour doing this strategy. So if you do this strategy for around five hours, doing it with $300,000, you can make around $1,500,000. If you do it with around $400,000, that'll be around $2 million per hour. So also make sure that you resupply these businesses when you go back. So every around every two hours, make sure you go and resupply these businesses. Okay, so let's say that after around five to six hours, you made between a million five hundred thousand to two million dollars doing that import export method. So now after five hours, most of your businesses should be ready to sell as long as you always have a constant batch of supply. So that's why it's a good idea every two hours to two and a half hours, make sure that you resupply your businesses, buy full supplies for them, because then all of them will produce. And this right here, this is from my this is from my hitting two hundred million dollars video. And right here I'm showing you guys again, this is just how profitable these businesses are and if you sell these in populated lobbies you will make a huge bonus so right there we sold we sold weed that was 242,000 and we got three hundred and eleven thousand dollars back so right there we got a 68 grand bonus just from that one and right here we are going to be selling counterfeit cash for 294,000 and instead of 294,000 we get 349,000 so right see right there we made a $56,000 profit and it's going to keep increasing it's 1% bonus per player so right here in the case of the meth this is selling for 357,000 so that's going to be a $3,570 bonus per player and I know some people are going to be scared to sell in populated lobbies but sell on free aim lobbies because they're generally more peaceful people are people are less likely to attack you on free aim lobbies and also if anybody ever tries to go after your stuff and you feel threatened you feel like they're going to blow up your stuff just find a new session or close your application and the majority 
of your stuff will come back. So right here, take a look in this case, we sold our cocaine and we got $488,000. And if you sell them in populated lobbies, you will make around $1,800,000 from the business. But we're also going to we're gonna subtract our investment a little later on in the calculations also. And if you sell the bunker on top of that, the bunker is going to be your biggest source of money here. The bunker takes five full resupplies, but it sells for over a million dollars. And if you sell that in that populated lobby, you're going to be getting a $10,500 bonus per player. Take a look at that. We made a million two hundred fifty-two thousand, so we got around a two hundred fifty thousand dollar bonus on top of that. So okay, so for strategy number two, you're gonna want to do the Doomsday Heist Act three, and you're gonna want to do it with two people, and you can complete this in under two hours and thirty minutes. The first, I'm gonna show you guys how to do it really quickly. Me, a strategy me and my friend do. So the first prep mission that you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to do the recon one, and make sure that your friend is already down at the docks waiting right here because it always spawns in the same location right down here versus a lot of the other prep missions that are random. So make sure you have your friend down here, and as you guys see, in under 45 seconds, he's already taken three pictures. And make sure that you guys are also filling up on supplies. Make sure you have supplies producing as you're doing these. Even when you're doing the setups, your businesses will be produced. So as you guys can see, my friend managed to finish the mission there in under three minutes. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do the prep mission marked cash. And make sure your friend is still in that area because it's the bag is going to spawn somewhere in South Los Santos, usually at LSIA or somewhere south of Los Santos. And as you guys can see right there, Lloyd is already making his way towards the bag. Just go right back in the facility and just wait. Because this, you can just start the next mission right when he delivers it. And take a look here. He has delivered the bag. Okay, so look, we took out two prep missions in under five minutes here. And now what we're able to do is we're able to start the first one, Rescue Agent 14. When you do the Agent 14 mission and you encounter the Juggernauts, and this is also for the finale when you encounter the Juggernauts, a really easy way to kill them is just to pull out the minigun and just shoot them in the face. They'll actually take a few shots with the minigun in the face and then they'll die. Take a look at this. Me and Lloyd take them down easily here. Got, got one. Two. Three, and they're clear. Taken out easily by two people. You guys can easily do this heist with two people if you work together. And if you got the Vigilante, the Vigilante will help you a lot on the on this heist, tremendously. It'll get you from point A to point B very quickly, and the missiles are so accurate, they can take out a lot of enemies and clear areas out easily. When it comes to the um, Escort ULP mission, you don't actually need to use the Chernobog. You just need to get into the Chernobog and drive it to the first point in order to progress in the mission. But other than that, you can use the Half Track or another vehicle if you don't like the Chernobog. But make sure you have some way of shooting down those helicopters. Now when it comes to the arms dealer prep mission here, you don't need to follow the arms dealer into an alleyway and just silently take him down. You can just blow him up instantly, but the second you blow him up, you'll have three stars. So just blow up the arms dealer instantly, and then just call Lester, pick up the bag, and then just get out of there. Easily can complete this mission. You don't need to, you don't need to waste time following him in the alley and stealth killing him. Once the briefcase is delivered, you can do the next one, Barrage. And when you do the Barrage mission, make sure that you take out the, the Valkyries protecting the Cargo Bob first, then let the Cargo Bob pass over you. And the reason that you want to let the Cargo Bob pass over you is so that it's closer to you and it's easier to access versus having to go down the hill. So right here, you guys see the car, the Barrage landed like a block away from us. Easy, easy for us to pick it up. And if you got the Vigilante on this mission, it's going to help you out a great deal. Just take the Vigilante down the runway here and just take out all the enemies. Lock onto them. And every single missile is pretty much going to hit the target because these missiles, they're the best missiles in the game. Same with the missiles in the Deluxe, so in the Ruiner, they almost never miss. Take that out. Easily clear out the runway. Then when you clear out the runway, just get out of the Vigilante and just pull out an explosive sniper and shoot this helicopter down. It's not going to appear on your radar at first, but it's coming the second you clear out the runway. And then mission complete. Now, when it comes to the Kanjali mission, what you're going to want to do, and I recommend this, is take two Karumas, have one friend go into the warehouse right there and just destroy the equipment. You take the other Karuma and go towards the Kanjali. Wait for your friend to clear out that, that warehouse. Once all the equipment is destroyed, just get in the Kanjali. You don't have to wait for your friend to get in the Kanjali. You actually don't want him to get in the Kanjali because it's going to get more complicated. If your friend does not get in the Kanjali, you will have this notification at the bottom of your screen. It'll say, wait for your team to enter the Kanjali and just keep going. Just drive to the destination. And the reason that you want to do this is because no helicopters are going to spawn. You know those hunter helicopters that spawn and attack you? Well, as long as your friend doesn't get into it, they won't spawn and they won't attack you. So just have your friend drive in the Karuma and get over there to the destination. It's going to be at Lago Zancudo. And you, you can just drive here and the enemies can't hurt you. You're just going to have these Avon's goons. They're just going to be uh, trying to smash into you here on the road, but they can't do anything. You're no, you don't have to worry about those hunter helicopters attacking you. So just take that tank there. And then once you're at Zancudo, just let your friend get in and then you'll complete the mission. 
once you're here, just let your friend get in the tank and you're good. Mission complete. He's easily completed that. Don't have to worry about the hunters. Now, when it comes to the final prep mission, where you have to damage the jet, and you have to wait for it to crash into the water, you actually don't need to wait for it to crash into the water. If you use the explosive sniper, and you shoot that jet three times, so make sure you land somewhere close to that jet, just shoot it three times in the explosive sniper, it will actually nosedive down, and it will crash pretty much anywhere. Anywhere where, you, where it's flying over. So three shots with the explosive sniper, and it'll go down. Other vehicles, like missiles and the explosive cannon, you'll keep shooting it and shooting it, and it won't crash. But if you use the explosive sniper, it'll crash easily and you don't have to wait for it to go into the water. So pick up the module there, just deliver it to the facility, prep mission completed. Now for the final setup mission with the Volatile here, what the easiest way I find to complete this mission is just to follow everything in a straight pattern. Just bomb all the targets in a straight pattern. You guys saw I took out one Sam here, take out second Sam, boom got that. You're going to have to make at least two two to three passes, but if you just follow these like these and just bomb the targets, bomb the targets along a straight path, and you hit them each time, you'll be able to easily complete the mission. See how many SAM sites I just managed to clear out there? Okay, so now we're going to be doing the finale. Now here's the reason we are doing this heist of two people. It's so that we can give ourselves a much bigger cut versus doing it with four people at the end. Now if you guys take a look at the board up here, it says a million two hundred thousand dollars reward. If you do it on hard, it's actually bigger than that. It's a million five hundred thousand, but for some reason, the screen isn't displayed correctly. So you guys see, 60%, I gave myself 720,000. The cut is actually going to be bigger than 720,000, and my friend's cut is also bigger. So as you guys saw earlier, the screen before said I was getting $720,000 cut, but my actual potential cut is $900,000. For some reason, this wasn't uh, corrected when Rockstar was doing the Doomsday Heist. It shows you the normal payout, but the payout is actually much bigger. And you, if you're the host, give yourself a 60% cut and give your friend 40%. And that's actually the best way to balance it out. Because you paid $120,000 to purchase the heist. And also, your friend got $45,000 every setup mission. You didn't. Which gives your friend like around 200, over $200,000. So, if you do 60-40%, it's actually going to balance itself out. And you guys are going to want to use the Barrage. And the reason that you want to use the Barrage is because the Barrage will give you a $100,000 bonus instead of giving you a $50,000 bonus with the Kanjali. It's only going to go to the host, but it still balances itself out. The host will get around $880,000, and the um, the second player will get around $830,000. Very, very minuscule difference, but it's the easiest way to balance itself out. If you give yourself, if you give it, do it 55-45, it's still uneven. The best way to balance it out is to do it 60-40. Because remember, your friend got paid for the setup missions, you didn't, and you had to pay for the heist. When you take the barrage through here, just try to rush through here and just try to avoid all the insurgents. Don't even bother with them. You don't need to destroy them to move up. Just make sure that you're stocked up on snacks and armors before you do that. And make sure that you have that open at all times. And right when you go through the base itself, when you're dealing with the juggernauts, just do the exact same thing we did in the Agent 14 mission. Just pull out the minigun and just take out the juggernauts. You're going to want to move up slowly through the base. There's no need really to rush. And me and my friend, we did this on free aim. So for people that think it's impossible to do it with two people, we did it on free aim with two people and we didn't die once on this when you get into this room itself you're going to want to go up this staircase right here um it, it's it's diagonally from the entrance that you come in from and what the reason that you want to go up here is because this is where your first server is going to be and you can easily get up here without having to go all the way around and having to fight all of avon's guys when it comes to the hacking game you can get really lucky and you can get some of the easier ones or you can get some of the more complicated ones. Um, make sure that you also remember that you can press triangle to actually make, speed up the rotation. And whenever you see these red boxes, sometimes they'll be blocking your um, the orbits that you have to hit. But you can actually destroy two of the red boxes, no problem. So if they're ever blocking you, just destroy the red box and then just hit the orb right there. So you can, remember, you can destroy two red boxes. When it comes to the end here, when you have to uh, chase Avon out of here on jetpacks, it's actually best just to go straight for Avon. Don't bother with the helicopters, just go straight for Avon and just kill him. Because the moment you kill him, all the helicopters are going to back off and they're going to stop chasing you. And now look at this, all the helicopters have stopped chasing us and we can easily finish the mission now. So whenever you get out of here, always target Avon just so you don't have to deal with the helicopters. And taking a look at our payouts at the end here, Act 3 to Doomsday Scenario. Let's take a look at our payouts here and look at that. $1,500,000 potential earnings, actual earning 60% of the cut, 900000 okay. Now here we come to our calculations. I wanted to show you guys that you can get $4 million doing, uh, doing these two methods a day. 
Now take a look right here, document forgery. We invested $75,000 in supplies. Regular amount you get for that is 126,000, but you can sell it for up to 150,000. That's the most I've gotten when I sold it. In a populated lobby, it would be a $1,260 bonus per player. Weed, we invested two batches of full supplies. That's 150,000 and sells for regular amount of 252,000. The most I've ever gotten for weed is around 315,000. That's if you sell in a pop really populated lobby. Counterfeit cash, 150,000, investing two batches of full supplies, you get $294,000 back. And if you sell it in a populated lobby, you can get up to $360,000. Meth, you buy three batches of full supplies, 225,000, and it sells for a regular amount of 357,000, but you can sell it in a populated lobby for about 457,000. So you can make a $100,000 bonus with the meth. And as for the meth and the coke, both of them are three batches of full supplies, but they really take two and a half to produce. So when, it, when two and a half batches of full supplies produce, you're still gonna have another half of a batch left for the next for the next um next production and then all you need to do is just buy two supplies so again you need to buy three three supplies for coke and, coke and meth but you're still going to have some over so you're going to have some producing over so you can even add on to this chart and actually add on more so you just need to buy supplies two times after you sell it once because you still have half a batch left and for coke Regular amount would be 420000 but I've sold it up to 530000 right there. So you can make over $100,000 bonus. Bunker, it's five batches of full supplies, investing $375,000 into it. Regular sale would be $1,050,000. You can sell it for up to $1,315,000. That's the most I've gotten for the bunker. The bunker sale before, not counting double money. And now if we subtract, that's our total earnings would be the amount that we made in total will be three million one hundred twenty-seven thousand. If we subtract that from one million two hundred thousand, that's how much we invested in supplies. We get around a million nine hundred twenty-seven thousand, so close to close to two million dollars. Now let's combine it with our import-export method. So here's our import-export method. Now again, we're gonna be wanting to do this while our businesses are producing, because our businesses are gonna be producing, and we're gonna be doing this in the meantime. So either you do this or the doomsday heist method. Now if we did the import-export method, we could steal two cars and we could sell it for $16,000, and you can basically st steal, you can sell one to two cars per hour because there's a 48 minute cooldown. So after after about an hour, you could sell you could sell two cars in that hour, but then the next one, next hour after that, you'll be able to sell one car. So around $16,000, around $16,000 an hour from stealing those cars the, and selling them to Los Santos Customs. Now let's say we did four headhunters. You do four headhunters, let's say you get $21,000 each, you get a total of $84,000 in that hour. Now you do four sightseers in that, in that same hour also, $22,000 let's say each one, around $88,000. And we sell two top range cars, $160,000. And you, you, can get, you can get between $330,000 and $350,000 per hour doing this method. You could even, you could even raise it higher. It could, probably, it could probably go up to $400,000 as I've said earlier, but it will, be, it, will be going a little bit, it will be going a little bit over an hour, maybe like a few minutes over an hour if you were to sell a third top range car because remember, there is a 20 minute cooldown on the top range car. So if you sold another one, if you sold another one a few minutes after that hour, you can get up to $400,000 as we discussed earlier in the video, but just straight straight up one hour, just being technical terms, around $330,000, $350,000 per hour. And after six hours of doing this method, we get we get around $2,100,000. You can get it even more if you sell that third top range car really quickly. And $2,100,000 plus $1,927,000 from the businesses, we can make $4,027,000 in around five to six hours. And in regards to the businesses, guys, this, this method you can do pretty much your, by yourself. You don't need anybody helping you on this one, but I highly recommend that you sell the MC businesses with a friend. You could sell the MC businesses by yourself, but it will be very challenging because you could have three delivery vehicles, even possibly four if you have the bikes mission. So all you just need is two other friends, and your friends will get around $35,000 um, each sale also. And also, just ask your friends, do you need help selling anything? And I'm sure, I'm sure they'll help you back. So just get just two two more friends on to help you at the end. You only need them at the end. That's the only thing you need them for on this method, just at the end to help you sell. So the majority of this method you can do solo, but this, you just need two buddies to help you sell at the end, and you can easily get that $4 million a day. Now with the Doomsday Heist Act 3 method, this one you're going to need just one buddy on. So just have just one friend that you, that's willing to do this heist with you. And you can complete this heist in under 2 hours and 30 minutes. That's how long it took me and my friend to do it. We, we pretty much did all the strategies I showed before, so take advantage of those. If you have any other questions on the heist, anything that's bothering you guys, you can leave that down below and I'll try to help people out. But again, you need one other person to help you out on this. And 
This, again, remember, make sure your businesses are producing while you're doing this heist, the same as the import export, and your businesses need to be resupplied. So every two hours to two and a half hours, make sure you go back and resupply your businesses. Like when you finish a setup mission and then you get teleported back into free mode, that's the point when you want to, that's the point when you want to resupply your businesses. So let's take a look at the cuts here. 60% cut, you'd get a million dollars. It said $900,000 before on the cut, but you also get $100,000 for the barrage if you do the barrage mission. So you get around a million dollars and we subtract the $120,000, that's how much it costs to buy the heist, you get around $880,000. Now the associate, they would get around $825,000 because they are, they are getting paid for the, they're getting paid for the setup missions and they didn't have to, um, they didn't have to, uh, purchase the heist itself. They get around $45,000 every they get forty five thousand dollars every setup mission so this doing it 60 40 it's pre it's it's this is the fairest that you can possibly make it eight hundred eighty thousand to eight hundred twenty five thousand not that much of a difference and you just switch off you can do it two times a day you can either wait for the cooldown or you could just do it or you can just do it with your buddy your buddy will host the next one and if you're doing it as the associate if you add up eight hundred eighty thousand and you add up eight hundred twenty five thousand you will get around a million seven hundred and five thousand dollars in around five hours of work doing the doomsday heist actory now if we add a million seven hundred and five thousand to what we got from the mc businesses <clears throat> and the bunker we will get three million six hundred thirty two thousand now this is a little bit under four million dollars it's about it's about three hundred it's about three hundred sixty thousand dollars short but if we do the import export method for an hour we could easily get that money back we could easily make that three hundred thousand dollars remember the doomsday heist this is for five hours of work the import export method was around six hours of work and we got four million so you would just need to do the import export method for an hour or you could do anything else just do contact missions or do other ceo works or even mc contracts anything else or help your friends sell you could also make some money helping your friends sell their business it's around thirty five thousand dollars usually most mc businesses will sell for so you could easily get that three you could easily get that three hundred sixty eight thousand dollars within within an hour so this is pretty much my strategies guys this is what i do when i need to get when i need to get quick money money when I need to get quick money and I'm trying to get it as much money as I can possible, this is the strategies that I do. I always buy supplies for my businesses and then I do other things in between. And I, uh, most oftentimes, I'll do the Doomsday Heist Actory or I will do or I will do the import-export method that I showed you guys before. So this is a legitimate way that you guys can make $4 million a day. A lot of you guys have probably clicked on this video probably thought that this was going to be a glitch or something. No, this is a legitimate way that you can make $4 million a day. So I hope that you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think down below. Again, I'm sorry for for the length of the video i apologize for it being so long but i just had a lot of explaining to do and i had to i had to go through these methods so i hope that you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you think down below and i'll see you on the next one take care everyone